Did it start? What are the sneaky secrets that will get you to have a better time on Epcot rides than everyone else? Okay. Yeah. Nope. We're gonna take you through all of them. It's recording. Right, right now. now. That's the opening shot. <laughs> Perhaps the ride with the most secrets that can get you to have a better time is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. This is the relatively new Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster here in Disney World. It is a story coaster, so there's a bit of a story going on as you cruise through, and an omni coaster, so it does rotate 360 degrees. Now, at the time of filming, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind does use a virtual queue as its line system. The only way to ride it is by joining this virtual queue or by buying an individual lightning lane to skip that standby queue. The first tip does have to do with that virtual queue. If you want a good spot or a spot at all, especially on busy days, it drops at 7 a.m., 1 p.m., and on nights with extended evening hours, it does drop at 6 p.m. as well. Regardless of what drop you're going for, there is a method I use to get the virtual queue without fail every time. I have never not been able to get it uh, using this method. Basically, you're going to want to watch a clock with seconds on it. My phone has one in the clock app. And then you'll want to refresh exactly at, if you're doing it the 7 a.m. drop, 7 o'clock and 0 seconds a.m. Little bonus tip is that if you press the refresh button instead of swiping down to refresh, the refresh will happen faster than if you swipe down. I've had better luck using the refresh button getting virtual queue groups that are under group 10. This morning I did use that method and I did get a virtual queue drop that was well before noon, which means it's great if I wanted to ride this ride before park hopping, which doesn't start till 2 p.m. Next tip, that virtual queue might start during early entry. Um, early entry is for resort guests. You can get into the theme park 30 minutes early. Now, if that does happen, if your virtual queue is called before you get to the park and then you miss your hour long window to return, go ahead and speak to a cast member here at the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. In most cases, they will be happy to help you out and get you on that ride so you don't miss out. But just heads up that if you have one of those earliest groups, it might get called before you're even allowed to get into the park. Ah. <laughs> Obviously, when I got the virtual queue this morning, I did include Sage. You're a good friend. Because it would Thank be really you mean. For being a friend. Ooh, oh, oh. Wow. It'd be really mean if I didn't. So <laughs> something to remember on all roller coasters, which in Epcot is just Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Look at Sage making social content. Is that the front of a roller coaster feels the fastest and the smoothest, while the back feels the wildest and whips you around a little more. On Guardians of the Galaxy, there's also the middle which gives you the best view of the story elements. So if you want a specific seat, go ahead and ask cast members if it's okay if you wait for one. Pay attention to the speaking parts on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. It's really hard to hear the first time you ride, but there are super funny jokes from the Guardians that do change from ride to ride. So whether you're riding it for the first time or the 76th time, I don't know who you are that you're that lucky, uh, go ahead and uh, listen to those speaking parts. This next one's a super sneaky pro tip. When you are on Guardians, stick to the right as you head into the two pre-show rooms. When the pre-show room changes, no spoilers, head towards the doors. You'll be the first out of the pre-show and into the final stretch of the queue, which will make for a much shorter wait in the final stretch of the ride line. Now, on evenings that there is extended theme park hours for deluxe resort guests, you can try for the virtual queue for extended theme park hours. There is still no standby in the evenings, uh, even though there aren't a lot of people in the park. So if you want that virtual queue, you get to try at 6 p.m. The pro tip here is that you do not have to be in Epcot, so do not rush to Epcot to get there by 6 p.m. to get that virtual queue spot. If you're headed to extended evening hours, you can finish up your time in Magic Kingdom. You can be having dinner. You can be in your hotel room. You can be off property completely. And as long as you are eligible for extended evening hours, you can join that virtual queue. This last one is super important. The ride photo is immediately after the reverse launch as the car turns around. If you have long hair, keep it out of your face. This one's a big one for me. All of my Guardians photos, my hair is just completely covering my excited face. So try to keep your hair out of your face immediately after the reverse launch if you do want that ride photo. Okay, they're headed for the jump point. This plan is never gonna work. Rock it! Well, okay, I've walked onto your vehicle. We'll be right behind you. Nothing to worry about. Unless we're gonna stop this unusually large man. Literally all the way in the back of France, it's almost hidden, is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. 
Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is a trackless dark ride that shrinks you down to the size of, well, a rat, and puts you right in the middle of an adventure with Remy and his friends, and you're in a kitchen, and you're trying to make stuff, but French people are like, nope, rats should be here in the kitchen, and the Linguini's like, but please, he makes good food, and the, it's just, it's an ordeal. This is actually a replica, a copy and paste of uh, what they have over in Disneyland Paris. It is definitely one of Epcot's newest attractions other than uh, Cosmic Rewind, which definitely makes it very popular because Cosmic Rewind isn't as accessible as uh, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Sneaky trick, if you're trying to rope drop Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, only rope drop it if you're coming through the International Gateway. Now the International Gateway is actually a second entrance that Epcot has at the back of the park at World Showcase. Now the International Gateway is usually for people staying at the Boardwalk, uh, Yacht and Beach Club, Swan and Dolphin, like those those kind of resorts in that in that, in that that general area. And it is right next to France. You literally take a right and you're here and you're ready to adventure. It's perfect for rope drop. However, if you're trying to rope drop and you're coming from the front of the park, it's not really a rope drop experience because it's going to take you a long, long time to get to the back of the park. France is all the way at the back of the park and the Remy's Ratatouille is all the way at the back of France. So by the time you rope drop in the front of the park, everyone in the International Gateway, they are already in line and you've missed out uh, on a potential rope drop like test track which is closer to the front of the park because trackless rides are relatively new for example uh mickey minnie's one-way railway there's no track it's kind of all over the place that's a trackless tra that's a trackless attraction trackless attraction say that five times fast i can't even say that i can't even say it once because there's a lot of tech involved it does have the tendency to go down from time to time meaning the ride does get shut down for technical purposes if the ride does get shut down i recommend hanging out for a little bit. For some reason, people immediately leave this attraction if, if they hear any word of it getting down. So hang out for a bit, because once people leave, it can have a very, very short wait time when it comes back up. While you're in the queue, I encourage you, just take a little whiff in the oven, in the kitchen and at Remy's restaurant. Just for some fun smells, you're, you're gonna be surprised. For almost every attraction you'll see on Walt Disney World property and even Disneyland and Walt Disney Worldwide, they really try to immerse you in every way they can. If Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is down, booking it on Genie Plus could get you an experience redemption. So when a ride goes down during your Genie Plus window, the My Disney Experience app automatically awards a multi-experience redemption pass that can be used at any time on most attractions. And when I say most attraction, it just leaves out some of the really, really popular attractions, unless that was the ride that you had for the JD Plus reservation for. We love a good loophole. All right, next up, test track tips. This is an extremely popular ride where you race in a sim car. It's the fastest ride in Disney World with speeds around 65 miles per hour. Pretty wild, you can hear it going by. Um, but there are a couple of tips to help you uh, have a bit more fun on this ride. 4-1 Test Track tends to have a pretty long line. Right now, midday, it's got a 75 minute standby line. Now, if you're able to split up your party, there is a single rider line available on Test Track. And it typically has much, 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 much shorter waits. In single rider, we're even breezing past the lightning lane into this design station area. There's literally no one in here. So we basically just walked directly into the pre-show. And now our goal is to design a car that will win. So Test Track does have this element where you do get to design your own SIM car. And those SIM cars are scored on points in several different categories. There are winners for the day and there is a maximum score of 232. Now in the single rider line, you do pick from pre-selected vehicles. So you don't get to try out these maximizing tips. It's in the main line that you get to do that. Now. Our next tip is how to get the highest score when you're building your car in Test Track. When you are building your car, you're going to want to start with that line screen. You want to draw the line like a stereotypical car, a little hump over each wheel, kind of valley in the middle. Uh, then once you have that drawn, you're going to sculpt. And your goal here is to get the sum of the numbers at the top of the screen to add up to 196. This helps if you've got somebody who's got a calculator on hand. Uh, then once you've got that score to 196, you can move on. Uh, at this point, you're going to want to raise the trunk as high as you can, make the car as wide as possible and as short as possible, and then you're going to want to make the wheel size plus two points. Now, the biggest place that you're going to gain points that's the most important for maxing out that score of 232 is going to be in the accessories phase. With this one, you're going to want to click through and look for the biggest net gain. Each stat will give you a minus, 
uh, and or a plus to the different figures, you're just looking for the highest net gain. We're looking for the best overall car, not the best in any particular segment. It might take some practice, might take a few tries, but that is how you get a perfect score of 232 on Test Track. Now, if you want to make sure that your custom car registers with your Test Track ride vehicle so you can see its stats in real time on the ride, you're going to want to scan your Magic Band pretty much as soon as you walk up to the loading zone, not when you see your car pull up. If you see your car pull up, it's too late, so you're going to want to scan before then. Now, the other trick is if you do want to max out that score, if you want to be the top scorer of the day, uh, you're going to want to come earlier rather than later. Once 232 has been reached by somebody, that car cannot be unseated for the day until the ride resets at night. So the car that currently has the max score of 232, which you can see right there, cannot be unseated unless that person makes a new car. So if you want to have the best car of the day, come early. Now at the World Showcase, there are many different attractions or experiences in each pavilion. Sometimes there are full-on attractions like Frozen Ever After in Norway or the Grand Fiesta Tour in Mexico. And sometimes there are these movies. It's like Canada far and wide. We're actually going to head close to the back of World Showcase to France. Towards the back of France there is a movie, if you will. Literally, it's like an, it's a movie, it's in a nice theater, <clears throat> and it's the Beauty and the Beast sing-along. But it's a twist on the tale as old as time, where, spoiler alert, you know Gaston's little sidekick, the one who's always getting punched and, you know, running around, uh, LeFou? According to this story, he's been the mastermind of Beauty and the Beast the entire time. How? Well, you have to watch the film to find out, but you can sing along to some of your favorite classic songs, to like, like Be Our Guest, and the, the classic song Beauty and the Beast, but it's just a fun new way to tell the story with, you know, new animation sequences and such, but you can actually watch a completely different film between the hours of 6.30 and 8.45 at night. Now, between that time, they don't play Beauty and the Beast sing-along, they actually play Impressions de France. Now, Impressions de France is a film where you can see the, the culture and uh, the, the tastes, the sights, the sounds of France itself. And Impressions de France has actually been here for quite some time. It was here long before Beauty and the Beast sing-along was even a twinkle in an Imagineer's eye. So just in case Beauty and the Beast is not doing it for you, go and check out Impressions de France. But you can only check it out between 6.30 p.m. and 8.45 p.m. Isn't that crazy? It's a very specific time. Now, here at All Ears, we're all about making sure you have the best time when you're at the parks, right? And that includes, you know, some, a little R&R, &R, a little rest and relaxation if you need it. Which is what I'm taking to the American Pavilion for the American Adventure. Now surprisingly, and also not surprisingly, the American Adventure is a great place to rest. Now the American Adventure is a epic theatrical event on stage and screen, according to Disney. Approximately a 30 minute film that features live animatronics, moving set pieces, and a classic Americana score. It tells the story of how uh, America came to be. Literally going as far back as when we separated ourselves from England, and the whole thing is hosted by Benjamin Franklin and Mark Twain. But in the lobby, no, But there's a great pre-show right before each show happens. And it's the Voices of Liberty. Which is an amazing vocal group. It is an indoor theatrical experience. The seats are super nice and comfortable. It's temperature controlled. It gets nice and dark in there. And you can nod off. It's like watching television, except with animatronics at Disney, you know, it, just take a nice nap if you need to. Our next set of tips is for Mission Space. This is a simulator attraction that has you simulated on a rocket launch into space. There are two different versions of the ride. There is the green and orange sides. Uh, green is less intense. It does not include the centrifuge spinning elements, so you do not have the G-forces. Orange, you have pretty intense G-forces, and it's known for making people a little queasy. Because of that, our first tip is to ride Mission Space very early in the morning or as your last attraction to minimize queasiness or at least make sure you're escaping the park immediately after you get a little queasy. We also highly recommend bringing Dramamine for your Epcot day in general. 
Uh, Mission Space is not the only ride that tends to cause queasiness here. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind as well as Remy's Ratatouille Adventure can do so as well. So if you have something to mitigate that, you might be better off. Another fun trick about this ride is that Mission Space Green and Mission Space Orange do have different storylines. Mission Space Orange is a mission to Mars and Mission Space Green is a mission around Earth. So they actually do have different storylines. It might be worth riding green if you do tend to ride orange. Although I don't recommend riding orange if you ride green because you want to minimize squeeziness. Storyline's not that different. Now if you do want to ride Mission Space, whether it's on green or orange, and you are, you know, a little claustrophobic, I do not recommend this ride if you're very claustrophobic, but if you do want to ride and you're a little claustrophobic, go ahead and pick the navigator or engineer roles. These two roles are on the outside of the little pods that you sit in, so it can feel like you have a little more breathing room when you don't have somebody sitting on either side of you. Ah, the Norway Pavilion. And actually in this Norway Pavilion is where you're going to find Frozen Ever After, which is a slow moving boat ride slash dark ride inspired by the movie Frozen. Now this attraction actually picks up right after the movie ends. So Elsa has unthawed Arendelle, Kristoff and Anna are together and happy, and Olaf is, well, still Olaf. But Elsa has invited everyone to her castle for a, a big celebration. And because Frozen itself is super popular, that makes this attraction pretty popular. But if you're looking to ride this attraction and Frozen Ever After is on your must-do list, the shortest waits of the day happen during the fireworks. Whatever fireworks spectacular is happening at the time, because, you know, Epcot keeps changing things. Illuminations, Epcot Forever, Harmonious, what's it gonna be? Anyway, the shortest wait times are gonna be either during the fireworks or the first hour of park open. So if riding Frozen Ever After is on your must-do list, why not add it to your rope drop strategy? Look, I'm just trying to keep up my Instagram game and I gotta get, I gotta make sure I get as many ride photos as possible. Especially ones that, you know, aren't terrible. And during slow moving attractions or dark ride attractions, you're, you're never quite sure where the camera's gonna be. But the camera's actually right after you see Marshmallow. And Marshmallow is the huge ice creature monster that Elsa creates. See Marshmallow, get ready to pose for that picture as you zoom down that hill. Because you're gonna... You're gonna look good, I promise. Now, if you're in the line for Frozen Ever After before the park closes, you can actually still wait and ride no matter how long the wait is. That means being in line for an attraction by 10.59 p.m. if the park closes at 11. Uh, so let's say the park closes at 11 o'clock. If you're in line by 10.58, you'll still be able to ride the attraction no matter how long it is. And during this park close time, like the, you know, 10.58, wait times tend to be a lot shorter than what's actually posted. So give it a shot. You never know what'll happen. Just another fun tip to note. If one of your favorite things about riding Frozen Ever After or just Frozen the movie in general is Oaken, you know, the woohoo, big summer blowout. If you opt for a lightning lane, you actually don't get to walk through Oaken's like hut. Oh, we're passing it. We're passing Oaken's tokens and sauna. We are here at Spaceship Earth. This is kind of the flagship ride of this park. It is located inside the park icon. Uh, the Epcot ball is Spaceship Earth. And uh, we have got a couple sneaky secrets for this ride. You're gonna wanna wait to ride Spaceship Earth until the afternoon. Right now it's 11.50 a.m. about, and you can see that the standby entrance has a 30 minute wait. Now Spaceship Earth is an extremely high capacity attraction. So once the lines die down a little bit for the day, typically a little bit after park hopping time, which is 2 p.m., you can find Spaceship Earth to be a complete walk-on. It's the first attraction people see as they enter the park, so it's pretty tempting to just hop in line right here. Uh, but go ahead and walk past it, go check out some of the other rides, some of the food booths for whatever festival's going on, because Spaceship Earth will die down as the day goes on. Additionally, Spaceship Earth does have an interactive element, and it uses your ride photo to do this. If you really want your face to register, which you should, because it's pretty fun, Go ahead and look a little bit to your right and smile big when you reach that camera flash. I am headed to the land pavilion for our next sneaky ride secret. Sneaky ride trick, sneaky ride tip, etc., etc. Now the land is a pavilion that features all things, well, land related, earth related. Now Living Through the Land is a slow moving boat ride where you travel through three very distinct ecosystems before visiting an experimental greenhouse. Now this attraction wasn't always a fan favorite. It just used to be a thing that kind of existed. And then all of a sudden the Disney fandom picked it up because it, we decided it was this like really actually nice, relaxing ride. This like cool, like rushing water tones that were 
gorgeous and these like sounds. It was <laughs> it became like light ASMR in like for like farming ASMR. And if you're hoping for like a specific seat on Living with the Land, a specific row, you can definitely hear specifically at Living with the Land, you can ask the cast members, hey, I'd actually love to sit in the front row, and they're usually great about accommodating that. Typically just because Living with the Land doesn't have long waits, so they're able to accommodate your needs just a little bit better. On the Behind the Seeds Greenhouse Tour, you're going to visit uh, greenhouses and a fish farm. It's a one-hour tour. And you can learn about plant growing techniques, including uh, the uh, hydroponic soil-free gardening. I mean, that's kind of cool. And they even give you like a cool uh, handout to take home. Now, it is $35 per guest, and tours are offered uh, several times a day. Typically beginning at park opening with the last tour that's usually available around 4.30. And if you want to book it, you can either book it on the website or the My Disney Experience app. Now today, reservations are actually booked up throughout the entire day, so the Behind the Seeds tour is booked. So if you want to go, make sure you book that in advance. Here's just like a weird fun fact about Sage. Living with the land is actually just so... It is in insanely relaxing. And sometimes, if I'm having a hard time sleeping, I go to like a ride POV on YouTube and I like listen to it and it puts me to sleep like that. I don't know what it is about. I think it's the music and the like the rushing water. Does it, uh, just, it just does it for me. It just does it for me. And this is Soarin' Around the World. Now Soarin' Around the World is a motion simulator attraction. Uh, it's not a typical one because you know, you're not in a small shaky box like Star Tours. But Soarin' Around the World invites you to take a flight on a breezy airborne adventure as you hang glide above the breathtaking wonders of the world. Flying over Fiji, ice caps, Paris, India, Niagara Falls. I mean, it's, it's it's really gorgeous. But not only are the sights beautiful, you also get this really great wind effect that makes you feel like you're actually hang gliding over all these places. And you might even smell some things too. Now the theater slash ride vehicle uh, it consists of three rows and three sections. At first, you're seated, you know, one right after the other. The first row is in front of the other row. Second row is in the middle. Third row is behind you. And then each one of you is lifted up in the air. The first row actually goes the highest. Second row is right in the middle. And the third row is on the bottom. It's almost like a three-story theater slash ride vehicle. There are three sections, A, B, and C. A and C are on either side of the theater, and B is right in the middle. It's the middle section of the, of the theater slash ride vehicle. Like, I should mention it's also important to be in section B because it is a curved screen. Now the curved screen gives it a more uh, IMAX 3D look, even though it's not three dimensional. But because it is a curved screen, when you're seated in section A or C, things might appear a little, uh, well, wonky. You know, the Eiffel Tower that stands up really tall and straight might have a slight, I don't know, like a little slant to it. We talked about the B. The reason one is important is because it's a three-story theater slash ride vehicle, and you see some feet above you if you're in rows two or three, the middle row or the bottom row. So if you're in B1, you don't have any weird curvature screens, and you have no feet above you, it really feels like you're hang gliding above everybody. It's really cool. So ask for B1 next time you're riding Soren. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Wait, why are we here in front of Miguel? Because I love him. This is, okay. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. He's barking, I can't yeah. even. Now go watch all of our sneaky ride tricks at Magic Kingdom. See you there. Bye. Oh, that was Miguel. Woof. <laughs>